Hey, good afternoon everybody. How you doing? Steve here. Little, little woodshot. We wanted to welcome you to our Sunday evening vlog. Well, first of all, we apologize for the tardiness of the release of the video. It was a, uh, it was a rough weekend for some of us. Cold and flu season. Not fun. Alright, what do we have for you guys today? Craig Pocket Hole Joinery System. What is Pocket Hole Joinery? Okay, well, we know why I need these strapped to my head. Okay. Pocket joinery is not new to the woodworking industry by any stretch of the imagination, okay? The process is simple. It involves drilling out the correct angle hole to create a pocket. That pocket, in turn, creates a, a channel or a hole for your fastener to go into. It perfectly aligns your pockets uh, so that the angles of the fasteners don't go through the fascia of the other piece that you're looking to secure together. Provided you use the jig correctly, which we're also going to show you how to set this up and work with it properly. Want a hidden fastening system that's one of the easiest to use? Well, please, folks, do not look any further because we're going to show you today just how incredible this little uh, joinery system is, okay? The Craig joinery system uh, came about in the 1990s by Craig Summerfield who revolutionized this particular type of fastening system as far as I'm concerned. Uh, for the homeowner or professional, Craig has a joinery system for you. Uh, Craig manufactures a lot of other products, but we're strictly talking about the pocket hole joinery system today. The integrity of using this system uh, is stronger than conventional fastening systems out there. Wooden, wooden plugs, wooden dowels, or biscuits, uh, biscuit joints, generally Craig will surpass them with a holding strength uh, and a holding integrity of 30 to 35 percent more. All right. Now with the glued seam, your screws and fasteners, they act like permanently placed wood clamps on your material. The screws stay in, and with a little glue seam, I have never, ever, ever, ever had a problem with anything coming apart, okay? Applications, I'm going to skim over just a few things that I, I pulled off the top of my head between things that I've done. They go into greater detail on the blog, so please, guys, feel free to have a read or a look. Cabinet and face frames, as far as I'm concerned, that was the originally designed purpose for this. I worked in a cabinet shop years ago. I only really wish something like this was available. Everything there was, uh, was wooden plugs. It's not that it didn't work. A lot of kitchen face frames were made that way for years, but this is faster, in my opinion, and it's easier. Kitchen tables, end tables, and nightstands. If you have, seriously, base minimal tools, you will need a cordless drill. I mean, minimal, minimal, minimal is required to use one of these. But you can literally go out and you can build kitchen tables, end tables, nightstands, small furnishings, bookshelves. Let's say you're somebody who wants to do the farmer's market or maybe the flea market. With this system you can literally do one to two bookshelves per hour. It is that fast. And I'll tell you what, I'll step out of camera for just one second I'll go grab a couple pieces and I'll show you real quick. All right, let me come back in here. These are pre-glued and pre-clamped. Uh, I think they're 36 inches. 10 inches wide, 12 inches wide, 36 inches long. You could essentially mark up where you want your shelves to go. You can then take your panels, put them in your Craig jig, Put all your holes in, and then literally as simple as attaching, you'd have to cut your boards down for whatever exact width you wanted, but then you would literally take your Craig jig and you'd screw it in. You'd do the same thing, you'd flip it over, line it up with your marks and kapow, slap a piece of quarter inch MDF or uh, little one on the back, and you just fabricated a nice little bookshelf. If you have the engraving equipment, wonderful. You could turn around and personalize it with a nice little engraving on the side. I don't know of anybody who doesn't have a bookshelf or a knick-knack shelf in their house. 
okay? And with the Craig system, like I said, they go very quickly. They are nothing to build. Okay, staircases. I used this device because I had a couple of uh, treads in my house. I ended up popping the treads. We ended up taking the, uh, the Craig jig. I put a couple pockets on the side of the stringer that weren't going to be seen. I put the tread back on because every time you went up and down a couple of my stairs to my loft, you had the creaks and the scracks and the, the just yeah, I didn't want to hear it anymore. This system alleviated that just like that. I live in a very dry part of the, uh, the country this time of year. There's no humidity. All, all the treads dry out. The nails are loose and things squeak. So it is also great for fixing uh, your staircase treads. Picture frames, I can't say enough about that. If you guys want to go into some type of production picture frames, this is your device. Extension jams on doors and windows. If you have a reason to extend your jams out, thickness wall and you need to, you need to put extension jams on a door or a window frame. Well, you can do it with this device. Outdoor planters. Go out, get yourself some cedar or get yourself some uh, PT. You can make octagon, hexagon, polygon boxes. Just know your angles. You know that if you're going to be doing an octagon planter, it's basically eight sides. So you would divide your sides. You do a miter cut of 22.5 degrees on your boards, and then you start fixing them together with the uh, with the crank system. Okay, we go a little bit more into the overview. And the setup in the blog, but we are going to show it to you right now, right here. So without further ado, you guys can hang on. We'll be right back. We'll bring the camera in, and we'll, uh, we'll get in close on this, okay? All right, guys, we'll be right back. All right, everybody. Well, here we are. What we're going to do right now is we're going to walk you through the steps on how to set up your Craig jig. This is really a simple, simple process, okay? As we can see here, my particular jig is mounted on a piece of scrap laminate. And we have a couple of uh, plain down boards. I think they were cedar, pine, whatever. And we plane them down to make them level with the deck of this. So that when we put our material in, it sits flush all the way across. Okay. Now to set up, what we're going to do is we're going to take the provided bit that comes with the system. You also get a included Allen wrench. All right. We're going to loosen up the lock nut on the lock collar. I'm trying to do this while looking in the camera. It's rather interesting. <clears throat> okay. You notice on both sides of the jig there's a track or a column and you have measurements on each side. Now each side bounces back and forth half, five eighths, three quarters, seven sixteenths, one inch, four and a quarter, one and a half, so on and so forth. Well what you do is paying no attention to the pilot. We want to look at just the top of the drill itself where the boring head starts. We're going to set this into the slot and what we're going to do is because the material that we're looking at working with is three-quarter, we're going to set the very top, not the tip of the pilot mind you, but we're going to set the very top of that bit to line up with the mark right here that says three quarters. Hopefully everybody can see that okay. Once it's in, I just hold it down. I make sure that the collar is flush up against the base frame and just give it a quick turn and tighten it up. And it would help if I could see anything. All right. There we go. This is now set up to perfectly drill out a three quarter inch hole. That's the first step. The second one I'm going to rotate the, uh, let's rotate the device real quick. This is the other way you can set the bit up. You have a little brass thumb knob right here. Okay, you can pull him up and on the side you're going to see oh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of numbers and they're going to start at half inch and then go down to 1.5 or one and a half inches. You cannot exceed that with this device. You cannot put pocket joints in anything over one and a half inches. So we're going to set this in place. 
There we go. We're going to roll it down until we sit, uh, hit the three quarters. Whatever our material thickness is, this is where we adjust it. Screw that little knob in. The other thing that this kit comes with is you get the cap for your vacuum attachment. This thing will choke out a lot of sawdust. That snaps on. Now your, uh, your vacuum hose can plug right in there. No worries. The other way to set your bit, again, you can come into your, your lock nut on your locking collar here. You can loosen it. We know that this is set up for three quarters of an inch. I'll drop him down in and you can see where the bit, hopefully you can see where the bit comes out at the bottom. I'll take a couple business cards, I'll pick the bit up, I'll let it sit right here, and I'll tighten it this way. Either way will work, okay? Either way will work. Now, once we have this put in, we can remove it, get our business cards out of the way, and then we'll lock in our material. Now in this case, we told you we're using 3 quarter inch MDF. We'll mill down towards the end so I don't lose the entire piece of scrap. You have an adjustment right here with a locking nut on it. You can loosen this up, and if you're going to be working with any type of bulk stock, uh, you can be sure to put your lock nut in place. I keep playing with it a little bit until I get the tension that I want. A couple more little turns, good. We'll pull the uh, we'll pull the nut back. We'll give it a quick little quick little lock. This is all locked in now. What we're going to do is we're going to take our drill. Mind you, I do not use. Uh, when I go to set my hardware, I don't use an impact gun. We'll tell you why in just a moment. But we would line up in the back. And we'll just use an outside hole. Doesn't matter which one. Okay? And like I said, it does make, uh, it makes a little bit of a mess. Nothing major, but... Now when we undo this and we look... This is now placed, this little pocket is placed exactly where it needs to be. So that when we use the correct size screw, which will be a one and a quarter inch screw. But folks, that's really all that there is to this. We'll show you some of the other peripherals that go with the kit. You do have a, uh, you do have a portable housing right here. So you could actually detach. And you can now bring this out on the job site with you. You can do your settings just like you would if you were working with the big main jig. You can set it for three quarter. You would attach it onto the edge of the material and then you use a clamp to hold it. Like I said, this is the, uh, this is the housing for the portable. Very versatile, very very useful piece of equipment, folks. I, I cannot stress enough how handy it is to have one of these in the shop. There's so much you can do with them. They work very quickly. Investment is minimal. We wouldn't bat an eye at dropping hundreds of dollars on a nice piece of cordless equipment. This is a hundred dollar item. And I have no problem spending a hundred bucks. All right, guys, we're back. Last thing I can think to tell you is how this stuff goes together, okay? Now granted, we were using MDF for the example. I've just, I've got some scrap in the back. If we were using actual wood, hardwood and softwood, we'll get to both of the differences in a minute. But when we secure these, we either secure these to a face or a side grain. We never try to attach to an end grain. Here's why. Have a couple scrap blocks here. With the end grain, we know the grain goes in one direction. So this is what happens if we try to attach to an end grain. Here's our end grain, and let's say that uh, for the sake of example, we had a we had a pocket hole here. You're going to attach to the end grain, and it's like uh, holding a handful of straws. Those would be the grains of wood, and by the time you go to put your fastener down in there, 
All it's going to do is spread those grains out. There's going to be no physical integrity on that seam or that joint. But you do it on a face grain or a side grain, and you've got that 30 to 35% more integrity in your actual joint. All right? Now, to put these together, we'll actually take real quick, and I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll throw this together really, really super quick. We get a screw kit. You can buy these separately. I would recommend buying the entire kit. It's going to have everything in it you need, and it's not big money. What's nice is on the inside, it gives you the diagrams of all the screws that you have. It tells you what they're meant for, what material thickness they're meant for. Uh, I can tell you that the fine grain is good for the hardwoods, but the coarse grain you want to use on the softwoods, the MDFs, and the composites. Uh, for instance, a three-quarter inch hole, we use a one and a quarter inch fastener, a one and a half inch uh, piece of thick material with a, with a pocket would incorporate a two and a half inch fastener. Again, the kit's handy, and as you use stuff up, you can just buy those particular screws in a, in a small Craig box, okay? But to secure these, there's really, really nothing to it. We're going to take our pocket that we just drilled, right here in this piece of MDF. I'm going to go down through the face of this. Now the reason I'm using a cordless drill and not an impact driver is simply because an impact, I've had them strip these out. Well, that's not really what you want. I'll adjust my clutch on my cordless. And right there, I've got a good seam. I would continue more pockets down and that would be about it. Now, let's say you want to, uh, maybe you've got an area where that hole is going to be seen. Now, if you do have a pocket that you don't want to be seen, depending upon the material that you're using, you can go out and get these plugs. You can get them in uh, white plastic, so maybe you're doing, uh, maybe you're putting some shelving in, you've bought that white coated MDF stuff. All right, these basically slide in the hole and they cover the pocket. They also come in oak, maple, and pine, so you can also jam those in there. You can take and you can sand them out after. Really, really simple, simple system, guys. I can't stress enough. I don't know where I'd be up here without this. Now, we did tell you, uh, going forward, in each one of our blogs, that if we ever have an outbound link to an offer, which in this case, in this particular blog, in this article, we do. There's two affiliate links that are outbound to two different types of Craig systems. If you're interested, they're there. If you happen to purchase one, just know that our shop gets a little commission through the blog, okay? But I want to be very open with every one of you, and I just want you all to know that when we do have affiliate outbound offers, I will always let you know, okay? Honest and transparent. That's the way to run a business as far as I'm concerned. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I won't keep you. I hope everybody's had a great weekend. Please have a safe week. Get home safe to you and yours. I know today is a holiday. Probably a few of you have it off, but... For those of you working like the rest of us, well, keep up the uh, fight the good fight, and we'll, uh, we'll see you Wednesday for our midweek shout-out. Again, thank you all for your support and for following us and subscribing to us. We appreciate each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen.